Um, so moving on from last time, we generated our water meshes. And now we actually want to update our terrain. So it has a nicer connection with the water. Because right now it's basically at the same height. So the camera does not really know which uh, mesh to render first. So let's fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is actually group everything in the tray that is near the water. So going to get rid of this stuff. Well, I'll keep it for now. Um, yes, so I'm going to drag from here, hold Alt and click, and hold Alt again and click again. If you don't hold uh, Alt at the end, um, it will only allow you to connect um, to existing nodes. Uh, you can actually see the difference um, if I add another one. This one doesn't have a, a circle in the middle, this one does. So if you would go, it doesn't let you do that. If you hold Alt there, it will remove it as well. Okay, so let's add a wrangle node. And first, yes, so we're going to start from the water mesh cache here. Actually, we're going to add a blast node. And we're going to keep um, everything that's not in the extended group. So we can just throw away the extended group. And we're going to put that in the second input. And we're going to do that. However, right now, the water here, uh, the, the terrain and the water are basically at the same position. But because we don't want to actually have the vertical distance uh, affecting a grouping method, we're going to flatten our uh, water meshes. Just go to vp.y equals zero. Uh, alternatively, like you could decide to use a transform and set the y scale to zero, but this is not as reliable as just setting it to zero because you get like a floating point inaccuracy if you use it at the scale method. Okay, so we're going to use a d5 node and we're going to disable convex and remove shared edges. So now we have just the border points in a wireframe. And to make sure that we only detect the border itself, we're also going to use a ends sub and set it to unroll. So now these polygons are open. You can also see that the uh, primitive number will go on the edge. So we're first going to detect the distance from the edge. And because the polygon is now open, that will work. Um, I'll demonstrate the difference in a moment. So we need a vector P, which equals the current position but we want to check from the height zero because we uh, flattened the mesh here. Flatten. And now we're going to check the distance uh, from every point in this mesh to any um, edge on this input. And we can use the XYZ dist function for this. So I'm going to say float dist 
equals x was in this first input and p and then we're going to create a group out of that group near water brims water uh, I guess I'll be more descriptive first border is smaller than the maximum distance okay so now we can push that button and that will generate our uh, parameter from this code and to actually preview our group I usually like to use a combine group combine and just go here I also uh, would like to warn anyone who is running on low RAM machines because the following operations might take uh, quite a bit of RAM. So just a heads up for that. Uh, so yeah, right now there's no pr uh, points in the group. I mean, I did call it near water prims. So we probably want to run this over primitives. So the code is the same, but now it will generate a primitive group instead of a point group. Let's check. So near water prims. It's a uh, point groups. You set it to points. It will create a point group. But we want a primitive group. So yeah, we go there. We still don't have any points uh, or primitives in the group because this distance is zero. So if we set it to one, there we go. I think we actually want to use two in this case. There we go. And um, okay, that's the state of points there. Okay, quickly check. Okay, you shouldn't hear that. Okay, so because there's also some uh, water on the outside, we kind of want to um, avoid that being taken into account. So we can use uh, another group. Um, it's actually one of the nice things you can do is you can save uh, presets of your notes and unshared is one I use quite often. So let's say you make a shared uh, new, set it to points, Disable that, enable that, enable that. You can say, um, say preset, shared new, and now it's there. But yeah, I already made one before, so I'm going to use that. In, in our case, we actually want to group the edges uh, for something we want to do later. Okay. There we go. And group here. Water prints. And we're going to subdivide these because we want uh, a higher terrain resolution where we are actually modifying it. So I'm going to set the algorithm to open subdiv by linear because it's much faster. And we don't really care, we don't want to smooth the mesh anyway, or at least not right now. I'm going to say near water brims. Okay. Let me check. Uh, 
so so now yeah you can see like there's a band of high res geometry in between the other geometry right now there is one problem with this i'm going to demonstrate that with a edit so I select this point for instance it's not connected right now like all the points in the corner are also not connected but that can be solved by simple views so let's do that but yeah that problem will actually persist for these points because there's no point on the other side so we do want to fix that and um, we're just going to use some groupings for that um, okay and now because we did this subdivision if we now do a unshared you can also see that it takes or at least it already starts to take a bit longer than it did before or at least uh, if you have a lot more complex shapes in your water, it becomes uh, much longer. So what we're going to do instead is make a simple version of the unshared uh, group in our wrangle. So group unshared sub div equals the length of the point prints of the current point and if that's smaller than 3 it's most likely a uh, unshared point so let me quickly verify that combine Cook it first. There we go. Okay. So yeah, you can actually see it has the same points, except it skipped those ones. And we also want to, in this case, oh, uh, there we go. Neighbor count is bigger than four. So now we should, yes, now we have everything. Okay, um, just remember that this will only work if you're actually working on a 2D grid. If you're actually working with 3D geometry, uh, just using the unshared is probably safer. But um, just for this purpose, this optimization can be made. And now actually, to actually fix this problem, what we're going to do is dissolve these edges. So if by removing these edges, we can create triangles that go like that, and then our mesh will be reconnected as it was before. So we need to actually create another group. And that is, um, the shared so if dissolve and that is just the neighbor count of the current point being larger than four. So if I verify that group. So that's just these points. So now we can actually check the difference between these, uh, this group and this group. Uh, shared subdiv dissolve group subdiv. OK. 
Okay. So now we're just going to add a new group combine to make sure that we actually fix the edges because um, we do not want to dissolve any edges that are uh, intersecting with the outside of the terrain. I think in this case it's probably safe, but just to be sure, uh, check. Yeah, we actually want to have this group before. We're going to subtract the unshared group. I'm going to quickly save. Uh, water terrain. Uh, not if. Okay. And now we're going to convert these groups. Uh, unshared is not a valid group. Is it not? Wait. Uh, let me check. Ah, yes, because it's an edge group, and in our case, actually, we do want to have an overcome group. Just to be sure. Okay. Wait. We have no more points in the group. That's not right. Um, let me check. So in unshared, there's a lot of points. And yes, so we have 42,000 out of everything, which is 1 million. Yes, but if we check the unshared group, it would only be the edge. Ah, oops, it's not. Okay. Oh, that's why. Okay, my bad. So we actually need to group the unshared before we do the subdivide. So now it only should group the edge points. Okay, and now to check any difference, uh, to ensure the solve is 12.7.5. Okay, so it actually didn't remove any points from the group in this case, but it's always nice to actually have a safety catch for unexpected behavior. So let's start adding a group promote to go from points to edges. And we're going to make that the solve group. And that will start to make the group that we need. Now we actually need to clean the group, so we're also going to promote the unshared subdiv and we're going to only include these ones and now we can add another group promote uh, promote, there we go I'm going to subtract this one, or subtract the, oh, uh, no, not the promote, sorry, combine. And take the first group and subtract the other group from it. So yeah, now we have these. Um, did I do that correctly? 
this. No, I think we want uh, these edges. Let me quickly look at my reference. Okay, I figured it out. Um, so yeah, I actually made this mistake. Because in this case, I actually want to group everything that's smaller than 4. So, yeah, because this is a 3-way connection. And this is a 3-way connection. And this is a 4-way um, connection. In this case, ah, this works. So if I group combine here. Actually, visualize the groups again. It should just be these ones, yes. And then when we convert them to edges, then we get all these edges. And then we also want to get the other edges and then subtract them so we only have these edges remaining. There we go. Okay. So now we can simply uh, dissolve these. So if I copy paste this group, put that there, there we go. And now we can have a divide sop. Uh, let's actually make a another group expression node. Um, and gons if the and uh, no, VTX is bigger than 4. We're going to divide. And of what small angles. There we go. So now we actually have a nice wireframe again. There we go. Okay, so now uh, the things we still need to do is actually uh, modifying the train itself. So, uh, yes, let's go back to the normal smooth shaded, wire shaded. And actually start detecting the uh, edges from the water. So if the terrain is under the water we want to move it down and if it's right on the edge we want to maybe make the difference a bit sharper. So let's get rid of these. And let's make a new wrangle. Save again. Heck yes, okay. And we're going to check the distance to both the edge. And if it's um, and the center. Going to yes. Like that. Okay. So what we're going to do is again because the mesh up here is flattened, we'll start with a custom position, which is from the current position, but at the bottom of the world. We're going to check the border again. So float quarter dist border equals XYZ 
test one p and then we're going to actually modify p again to be minus 0 0.5 oh, five. and now we're going to do a raycast against the second input which uh, because it's also flattened will be at zero so if we do a raycast of uh, up it should always hit or if there if there is a mesh it should always hit so let's initialize output parameters for the function it hit equals intersect two p comma out p out uv is not equal to minus one okay so then we can say the water is water is multiplied by hit so if it's not inside the water the distance will be uh, zeroed and then we're going to subtract from the current height the water this border okay there we go so now it moves down the, the water just for reference, if I would not do this check, it would basically move up all the terrain, or it move, would move all the terrain down uh, near the outside of the water as well. But we only want to move the terrain down that is inside the water. There we go. Okay. So. Um, there's a couple of improvements that we can still make to this system. And first of uh, all, that would be to actually change or allow uh, control over how the, the bottom is shaped. So let's do that first. I'm going to again to uh, mod modify this value. Water this border equals fit water this border. And from zero to DHF max water body uh, body width from, and remap that to zero to one. So we basically have a maximum distance that it will go down to. So if we do this, it should be flat. And now I can basically specify the maximum. Uh, let me actually update this to have a larger range. Yeah, so now we actually modify the, the slope between the end and the start of the slope. So right now, if the body width is low, the slope will be sharper. But we also want to actually multiply this value again by a CHF max depth. Okay, so that you make it again flat because it's value is zero. And now we can start again to actually modify these values. Um, I'm going to again put this much larger. There we go. So yeah, now we can actually start to see how this slope works. There we go. Okay. 
and we can go slightly further by actually instead of just multiplying this by the ramp is also add a ch ramp uh, border shape water this border and actually multiply that by the next depth so if you press that shape so now it goes from 0 to 1 but let's say I want to have a fall off that is a bit different yeah, so now I can create a really custom shape for the water border in our case uh, what I actually want to do is set this to Bezier set this one also to Bezier and set this one to value 1 this one to value 0 also set this one to Bezier there we go so now we have a more smooth uh, fall off if I just remove that again for reference, Control Z. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a much smoother um, shape. Okay, and then there is one more thing that we can do because right now the shape itself is actually really um, well sharp because it's uh, polygonal so what we can do is actually resample this shape um, say a length of 2 resample by current edge Okay, so in this case it doesn't change anything, but at least when you would change the terrain resolution, then this, the smoothing effect will be the same in the end. So add a fuse node, because whenever you do a resample on an open curve, the ends will be opened. As you can see, uh, where's the start of the curve? Yeah, it's there. And right now these two numbers overlap. And before, well, I would add a fuse here. Yeah, it would be closed. And if I resample, it again would be open. I'm going to add a fuse here to make sure that that number is again connected. And now we can just use a uh, smooth. And because the, the water plane is already flattened at world zero, the y difference won't, uh, the y position won't make any impact, so we can just move the point position as is. And I think we want to be a lot less aggressive. Just want to get rid of the the small sawtooth um, effect. So let's simply put three. Should be enough. Okay. So if I connect, reconnect this here, that might create some artifacts because now the, the water border is smoothed, but the water shape itself is not. So to actually fix that, we can create another end sock. And actually close the geometry again. There we go. And also, just in case you would have a island in one of the water bodies, I'm going to go to optimization and remove backfaces. So now we can see if we have any islands. Okay, we don't in this case. Um, but yeah. If you would have, you would want to use a whole sock. Yeah, I guess I probably should 
Let's quickly demonstrate this. So if I go to the top view, I quickly draw a new curve somewhere like that and merge that in. You would have, um, say, an island inside your lake. You want to actually subtract that because otherwise um, the ray cast will still hit here and then it will detect it as if it was a lake even though it should be an island. So to fix that you can use a whole sub. Okay, so we can again connect that to this input just to see if there was any real difference. I'm going to quickly go back to this view and then we connect that. Yeah, so there's some very minor differences, but the more um, irregular your shapes would be, the more um, of an effect the artifact would have that we just prevented by uh, adding this uh, extra safety, let's say. Okay, move down terrain below uh, water border ramp. Uh, I'll just leave that this. Um, let's create a facet sub to actually update our normals on the terrain. Oh, wait, yeah, let's enable. Normals again. So, yeah, just to make sure that the normals are updated, if we go to smooth shaded. Pardon me. Um, yeah, let's save and do a merge node and actually drag in the water mesh. And now we should have ah yes okay of course so um, right now the terrain is at exactly the same height as the water so you probably want to just move the water down a tiny bit so if we just say minus. 0.1. Yeah, that should do the trick. And also, if you get like this weird uh, jittery effect, what you can do is again uh, increase this number. So yeah, now you can see it from far away. But then again, if you want to zoom in again, you have that problem. So. Uh, this is always about finding a balance, balance I guess. Okay, let's uh, quickly save this as a cache again. I'm also going to, just going to copy this one. Because that should not have any effect on our cook. So, terrain post water. Enable that. Yeah, so like we don't want to save the water inside the terrain, we want to keep it in this separate cache, which we can then reference later. And I'm just going to say save the disk. And there we go. Okay. Um see you in the next uh, part of the tutorial where we will add some um paths that go over the terrain. Some, uh, let's say, some small route, uh, roads, footpaths, uh, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, see you there.